recording at all. There we go, now it's coming on. I just want to maybe not repeat myself, but it finally uh, cut off. So it's about one in 15 minutes over, which is about 34.49 seconds or something. But that's okay, because you're not gonna notice it because I'm gonna slice the video. But you will notice it because I just took my position a little bit different than the camera. But so far it's still recording, so now it's good. Um, so yeah, we got perfect timing. We we ended up recording when I was saying about this is already pretty tight, and it is. Uh, just finally, just making sure, oh, this guy can go a little bit more turn, maybe even one more turn. So I just wanna make sure to push the threshold limit. There we go, just wanna keep him straight. This guy can turn a little bit to the right, and he's snug. This guy's snug, I believe make sure yeah he's snug yeah he's snug and then center one yeah he's snug so they are straight crisscross so that's good the next one here we're gonna do is this guy here I still have this cap open ready to go the silicone there's no more we can use from the shish kebab so it's done for the day in fact we should wipe them out before he dries up because it'll be harder to clean once he is dry it's almost like he's trying to sand them off sort of so, oh yeah, speaking of wipe, we gotta wipe this guy too now. Let's wipe, let's wipe the areas that we need to wipe more critical first. Okay, just ripping this guy out. Almost forgot, it's, such, it's so such a clean, you know, silicone that I forgot about that. Because we did it so fast, I didn't have to create a little mess on my hand. That's kind of nice, nice change. So you don't even get that much silicone out on the surface. But it's all in the thread, that's for sure. It's all in the plastic thread that's been driven and also in the washer that's going to help it glue itself. There we go. Let's go ahead and get this prep up this area here before our last one. So we'll put two on the sides. Hopefully we can find the other one. Uh, but we can't. We won't screw it in yet. We'll try to keep finding it. If not, we'll have to substitute with some kind of washer or something. So I'm sure we can figure out what we're going to do. And he doesn't even want to stay on there. Look at that guy. Alright, so I need you to stay, buddy. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go prep up a few. We'll do the first two. There we go. Yeah, we'll get two more. Just short one, that's it. Just short, just one. We have a total of five of these guys. There's got to be one more laying around somewhere, somehow. Alright, so, but we'll put most of the can in there. You can see how I'm facing them up. Kind of a cupcake. I'm not sure if the cupcake's this right, but there we go. Let's go and start. Squeeze a little bit out here. Okay, just got a second here. Okay, gotta go ahead and pull him out. See, he has a nice, perfect glop. This is really what we want, ideally. Okay, so we're gonna do is smash this in so we can see the holes. And I'm seeing it. It's very hard, but I'm seeing it. I see one little line here. Little line here. So let's go ahead and start putting at least one in there. This one shows a little bit of rust from something. This can't be rusty. They're aluminum, but they can't get dirty. Okay, I'm just gonna not tighten it, but just kind of snug in there. Snug. Next one. Not that hard to do, right? Squeeze a little out, put a little in, perfect glaze of glop all around. We even got a little bit on our diameter. See that? Almost all around, but it's pretty much still a nice glaze. When it turns, uh, let's go and get this guy. This other one here. See where it holds at. It's so dark on dark, so it's hard. But once you rivet it or put it in there, you can see, see where it's coming. Okay, so you can see how this one's not so even at all. So now we gotta twist this guy here. So we can put this one corner here. And we'll work on the other corner. So let's go ahead and put this guy here. 
Okay, it wants to come out, which is fine. Now you can even get this to turn just to make sure you cover all around. Should have done that too, but it's okay. There we go. It's just a little rivet point. Take them straight in while I'm holding it's fine too. It's kind of had, nice to have that little rubber. There's one more here. And we're gonna go crisscross, so we want to make sure we get we'll get this edge too. That will help align. Oh, this has a little plenty here. It's probably what you want to do with the one that doesn't screw all the way in, but you won't know that unfortunately. So I took them a little bit out anyway. I'll help this guy align. Okay, this one and then this one. So this one's pretty open. We're good. Let's let's try go aim for this one here. Uh, unfortunately, this one here, I probably want to put the one for sure has this, and then these ones is way on the corner. More than likely, your feet probably will never reach all the way back here for instance. So we'll we'll give him the last benefit of the washer here. Unless we can find the other one quick. Oh, we might. Uh, he might be in a stack of full of washers that we have. Probably somewhere. Maybe even here. Maybe. You know, all these little loose washer. So we'll take it out and we'll find out. Meantime, let's go and get this guy prepped. It's the last one, man. Not bad. We lost one out of this whole screw pack ordeal. I guess we didn't do that bad. And it's almost been a year. Now these guys, I didn't care to, or I don't even know you can order. But I'm sure they sell them just like plastic screws. So there we go. I got plenty of silicone in there. Smells like silicone vinegar again. But it's better than the the burning smell of super glue. There we go. All right. I think we can safe to say we can start tightening down because if we don't, we have no choice right now until we find the other one still, but we have to start tightening them down. This one's still, which is fine. This one's okay. This one's there. See, I'm going crisscross like a wave, sort of. I'm starting to line them straight, cross pattern. go last one here until we can find the other one this one actually didn't strip which is awesome but it will we keep trying <laughs> so it's not there we go come back to this one see there we go it's fine so we gotta really get this guy here you can see you can almost do without it still but Let's go ahead and put the cap because it might be a long time before we, we find them right now. Just make sure this doesn't get any dust get into our silicone. Very useful for us. All right. Let's check it out. Let's look for it. Oh, but it looks so nice now. It's all the, the metal, sort of metal look alike. Aluminum here is back on there. Let's badass yeah Zenons are quality scooter they're among the top they're next to Kemco as far as them making good Chinese scooters but man they are sure if, I, if these are that bad I can imagine what the pure Chinese scooters uh, you know second place is but that's okay that's why we get all these nice Taiwanese parts in there or Japan or American made oh but even though our screws are sometimes from China, they're not all that bad. So, all right, let's see if we can find the washers here, unregretfully. I'll we'll just take a dump on these guys right here. Get this area here, you can dump it and then come back. Right, that on here, I'll keep digging. These are not it. They, you know, they look like it. This one almost looks like it, really. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have a curvature. 
This one you can almost blend in as a crush washer. So it's not a big deal. We can, you know, make do with even a crush washer if we need to. They're light aluminum and they don't rust. But let me see if I can keep digging in here to find that missing washer. Because I know we have his bolts right here ready to go. So we'll put one of the bolts out ready for him. He's just missing his washer really. These guys are men but the little rusty straps, which are pointless. You could have got away with tie straps, be done with. I guess they wanted to save tie strap. Maybe they made a little bit of a piece of that metal going around. These are none but little cylinder studs, exhaust nuts, and everything like that. So those are not it. These are nice little Allen and terminal battery bolts. This is for the, the um, we call it the horn. Fuses, relays. Those aren't it either. Another clutch nut or serrated stator nut. I found a cap, which I don't, well, don't need it right now. These are nothing but random bolts that we replaced most of them with Allen's. This is a rubber, um, we call that. We should keep this in a little separate area for our, um, you know, brake assembly. Some of the rubber bushings and stuff like that to replace them if we need to. I think these were split off, but we accidentally broke it. Okay. All right, so we don't have it. So what we'll do is we'll use a crush washer and it'll take shape. A crush washer will probably be our best bet because it will take the shape that we need it. But these ones are, I think they're a little too big. Let's find out. Okay, we get crush washer. Look at that. Puts right in through it. So crush washer won't do it for this scenario. This guy might be our safest bet. But he's still damn too big. And he doesn't really flush flush, you know? Look at him right there. He's just laughing at us. <laughs> Look at that. So it's up to us to find a good washer for him. So he's probably gonna be the one that's gonna be the different. And hopefully he's not the strip one. If he is a strip one, then we have to figure out another route. But I think it should be no big deal. We can figure this out. There's some washers in here. These actually might work, even though they're they're smaller than expected. So let's go ahead and get these washers out. Oh, these washers actually came from the battery terminal. Um, but you know what? They might work for this situation. Surely they won't rust because they're from the battery. There we go. In fact, you know what? We'll keep this in here. I mean, I don't want to just rob it from the battery terminal. We have plenty of a little itemized washer. So let's, first of all, let's get this guy back into these little sleeves that we had nicely stuffed in there before we knew none of them were in here. So we might have to put these guys back. These are a nice crush washer for the Bonjo bolts. All right. All these are used washers, most of them, I think. So they don't really have a good role for us here. Just throw them in there. They're, they'll ship shape. Dude. Even this guy might work. This is probably the same as what we're talking about. See there? It covers just a little bit. Let's see. I mean, this is where he's got to be. So small, you can't even tell the difference when you see all these patterns. Then you see this guy right here, a little smaller. But we're shooting for perfection, so we'll try our best to find a good washer. That's not going to let us down. Meantime, let me get this guy straightened up. Put back into his little bag here. And it seems to get an idea of what we're looking for. Something small like this, but a little bit wider, big like this. Almost like this, but I just wish it had a more silver color. I mean, even this might be a potential, but it's too big. Too big and it's too thick. Yeah. 
this might be the best one actually. Let's see. Make sure it doesn't fit into the hole easily. I think it might. Barely. Look at that. We can make it work. I mean, that's how it looks though. We'll do a dry fit right now. But you can tell it from the surface already how it's gonna be. It's just too damn big. I mean, it's a good thing it's big, but it's just too damn big. It's probably even better not to even put a washer, really. But we want to, and we will. So let's go and get back and get this guy out of the bag, and then we'll go ahead and get the washer that we probably would need rightfully. Shouldn't actually have you guys wait for me to finish this, but figure you're coming around for the ride anyway. And we will be taking it for a ride, speaking. Can't wait. Um, I'm gonna first time doing is gonna go straight to the Chevron gas station that I always go to, and I'm gonna pump the the highest premium brand because it recommends at least 92 and above. So we'll put that there. I think it's the most cheapest Chevron, and also I think they don't do anything funny with their Chevron. I thought Chevron would be all the same consistent gas, but I realized some out of town Chevron that I pump sometimes they actually give me problems. But the one in here in Merced, I have no problem whatsoever. So I don't know. It might be a coincidence, um, but just maybe maybe in my mind or something. But I always get a little bit of car trouble when I pump out of town. And then when I come back in town, I pump it regular. Like, I don't know, the car is no problem again. So, yeah, let's go ahead and find a good washer for him. Let me go bring it over. Bring it. If we don't find one, we'll have to substitute it for one that we think is close enough. Should be plenty here. These are actually penny washers, though. So they're gonna be not really crushing kind of washers. But they might do as well. I'm seeing one right here. Look at that guy. He's kind of worn out. But I think he might blend in well with the rest of the gang. What do you guys think? Look, see how it looks like? They're kind of worn out too. I don't want too new. <laughs> I think this might work. This guy is a guy right here in the front. Front and center, need you. All right, that's what I think Tony Stark said to Scarlett Johansson in Iron Man. It was it Iron Man? Uh, I can't remember Iron Man one or two. It'll come. Oh yeah, Iron Man probably has to be two. He was trying to find a suitable source for palladium in his chest piece because it was killing him slowly. Might have been Iron Man 2, yeah. It could be Iron Man 3, could it? Yeah, Iron Man 2. Because that's when Johansson was first introduced to uh, Iron Man, or officially, as we know it. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the bevel edge again on top so it creates a look, the real round look. So, it's not the same washer, but it'll do. It's semi. From the top, you probably almost can't tell. Squeeze a little bit, guy out. He's ready for the final dip. Let's see if I can actually get him a little bit better around. I can squeeze him a little bit more once he's somewhat. There we go. I feel like we owe it to him at least because he's different to give him a little bit more portion. All right. I'll hold him in place because he doesn't he has a lot of slack to play with so get we'll make sure he doesn't move which he probably will anyway oh look see that is almost moving out Oh, then we can drive him in. He's the last one, so. I think he is driving in. He's tight, too. So it's a good thing for both of us. I think he's not that tight, but he's pretty tight. Let's see if I can spin him one more time around. 
Yeah, he's still he's spinning freely, so he's not gonna be that tight for us. But we'll just direct him. Okay, I think that's good enough. You can see that you can't almost tell. He blends right in because of the way he's a little bit older and he's concave. So that was it. Now we can finally cap this where we don't waste our silicone. Squeeze every bit of it out from the side so there's no air. We can prep this up for reuse, just like a toothpaste tube. All right, so there we go. Let's go and wipe these guys all out. Give it a wipe, just be really tight, careful. See that, they're not really much to wipe because when we feed it in there, we feed it pretty damn cleanly. All right, so there we go, we got this guy here. And now we gotta go ahead and ingenuity this because we gotta decide how we're going to First of all, I'm a clean freak, so let me finish what I'm starting with. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and remove. I feel like bringing the yoga mat, because I think it's gonna help support the scratches on the back here. So let's do that. Let's bring the yoga mat. Let's get this guy straightened out a little bit and get some more room to really contemplate and think how we're going to engineer this back part to fit over our Gibby case. We didn't have to use this. We could have separated it. A little cap left over. Well, to save a case we need it for something. Maybe we'll lose a cap again from there. All right. We haven't had that chance to use these guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and close these up so we don't actually kick them, right? One less, one less tool to worry about. This one here, let's go ahead and clean it. Because we need to get all the, the nasty stuff out of there. So let me go ahead and... That's not, it's hopefully sealed in this guy. Uh, fortunately, this guy doesn't have dirt unless we clean them. So we're going to take our old little thing and kind of give it a little... Just come up licked with the with the towel here. He was good to the last year. See the nice good. I can feel it's rubbing off. I can I feel him though. Probably see him too, a little snot. But you can feel it still. Feel still there like that. It's a little silicone. It doesn't go out smoothly. But it's getting there. That way we can put them in our toolbox and not have to worry. Getting a little bit pokey pokey. Okay. He's clean. He's like a dipstick. See, so we've got a little silicone here from holding it. I'm gonna get that out cleanly. Wipe that down. You don't need to have silicone residue anymore. These things are made to extract and contract or not. Okay. I'll save this tip here. I don't know how I'm gonna save them can't really screw them in here no I can't so I hope to not catch too much dirt in him he'll be useful for something so let me see if I can wrap him to avoid dust from him entering dust more so we'll wrap him like this a lot later in use hopefully we'll have for him but we can definitely get him all all the gunk off of him though because he came off last time cleanly so there you go, we got all our little tool bits. Clean the cap off a little bit. Don't want it to track dirt when we're putting it back in our canister, our toolbox. Clean to clean. Back here, let's take it off and just, see all that little spatical? You don't need that crap. Well, not in here anyway. So just go ahead and just take this real quick. Give it a good, Kind of a rub down, but don't squeeze though. Just want to turn it. You just want to get all that gunk off of here. It, when it dries, it's not that bad. There goes brand new silicone there coming. 
That way it creates a much more <laughs> sealed. When you're ready to use it next time, you'll have a fresh silicone junction again. There we go. Make sure the cap is not cross thread screwed in. And you're good. You got yourself a redo. And then this thing here, is, you can feel it already now. It's, it's slippery again, so it's not sticky with silicone. So there we go. That one's done. Let's go and bring these guys back. Oh, this is our... Um, where you call our cup holder. But before we decide to put our cup holder again, we gotta actually get that little center uh, plate here for our handlebars. So, and then we can't put a bar in because we'll have to remove again the brake lever and everything else to get the, you know, the uh, the SSR, you know, plastic handlebar here, this guy. So we can't really do that until, so one thing after another, we have to wait. And it should be coming in shortly this week, probably. Or maybe this weekend, I hope. But in the meantime, we got a lot of other things to get get tackled, so we don't have to worry. Put that back here in my tool trunk. All right. I need that. Oh, we're gonna need that Phillips, which hopefully I left it out there. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and this vitamin C is laying around. Probably want to drink it as soon as I can make a chance. Okay. Let's bring this guy over. Just set him a little bit here on the ground area. Okay, we're gonna work this side here. So. I always feel like doing this every time you do a clean project. You get a towel just to finalize any detail that you might miss. Or just to maybe catch a loose bolt that you totally forgot to tighten because you, you figured you got all of them already. This one is, this tracks a lot of dirt. I wish there's, there's probably a compound you could spray to prevent this from tracking. Look, see like here, I didn't even ride it yet. It looked like there's shoes marked dragging across it already. But that's just the way it is. Hopefully our brake line's still good. There's no leaks. No. Anything kind of dust or anything blows, it'll be blown here. I'm so concerned. Maybe that thing did fall. Who knows? My alarm. <laughs> I can't see it. Usually you can see a little bit red. I think I really shoved it this time far back out here. But we'll find out because when we ride and we hear it click, 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 something's banging loose inside the dashboard. If we do remove the dashboard though, I definitely want to get that blue wire from the remote starter again. I should have tapped it and ran it over here. Just in case if I ever need to maneuver and test it out on the solenoid to get it working one day, we could have done that easily. But now since it's already hidden here, it's not too shabby. It's somewhere here in the wire harness. We just have to pick out this dashboard. It's not like we have to rip this whole thing apart again. So maybe we just take out the front here and then pop this all out and uh, you know unlock the, the gauge cluster. I think we're, we should be home free. So it's not like we did all this work just to say we have to remove one gauge cluster. We have to remove all this again. No, it interlocks, but there's this point where this one is, you know, wasn't that pretty to get into. I understand that, but it still beats having to go through all these guys again. So yeah, these guys are, they're set. And I think it's really clean too. You can see it inside here. I never even showed you what kind of host am I. All right, so let's check out the inside now that it's done. Hopefully you guys can see it better than I can because because I can't really get my finger in there yet. So let me let me take this guy off the latch so you guys can be free to watch or unhook him from the charger. Either way, let me just unhook him from the charger. Be easier. It's not like he's dying for charge right now. He's constantly having a charge so I won't be interrupted. Okay, so here we go. I can't go right now because the crankcase, so I'm gonna have to go underneath the crankcase so you guys can follow my path here. And we're coming back up. Coming back up, we're riding. Okay, we're back to the, over this bar. Okay, there it goes. You can see the radiator in the dark, pitch dark. Now I can't turn the camera, unfortunately, because the exhaust is in the way. There's always something in the way, right? I think this is our exhaust mount. All right, let me see if I can go underneath him. Go over. Uh, oh boy. Alright, 
lost control, but you can see the bottom of the battery. Don't worry, I'll get control again. Oh. Totally lost control. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, let's go ahead and try to make do here. There you go. See the bottom of his belly, you remember how far he went, right? So you, you can almost still see the radiator from all the way out here. Isn't that amazing? Uh, but he's way in the front. He's about good. Oh, I say about three feet from us. Okay, so let's so we can do this way. I'm gonna slip him in. Yeah, there we go. I'm slipping him in. Now I've had a GoPro, a little bit different story, but I don't think the GoPro can zoom in resolutions better than this camera. Back here, why did why did I do this? Sorry, I'm moving you guys around a lot, but there's not really much gap here. There's a little slit right here. I can go before the slit and try to go up and in, and that might be our best bet, in which I think I'm doing it. All right, all right, you guys, I got you in. I got you in the VIP. I got you in the VIP room here. <laughs> I can't, I can't turn it much. There you go. I got him in. See that? There's little air holes. There's a bit behind him. So. We cleaned all this out. We even tried to buffer it. So it's not bad. It's such quite a bit of space here. So when rains or anything like that, they hopefully we'd be pushed out. And that's why the holes in the bottom there so rain can actually come out. Uh, if it's in an inclined position, of course. If not, there might be rain that's stuck in here, which we need to go apart and force it out ourselves. Maybe tilt the bike or park it upside down on the hillside or something like that to get the rain out. But yeah, that's it right there. Yep, that's it from underneath there. So we'll leave our clamp on here until we're really ready to the end where we can't fit anything else. We need to move this back out. But I don't think it's going to interfere with anything other than the fact that when we're ready to drive it, we probably would want to remove at least the clamp. We could probably almost keep the tie strap still on there for extra support. But so you can see here some of the little white spots. Let's see if I can actually just remove it with my microfiber cloth here. Yeah, it's coming a little bit. I think it's a little bit of the residue, either from, let's see if I can wipe it a little bit with tissue. Yeah, but just use a micro cloth, you'll be fine. It definitely get off with a little bit of polish and buffer or wax, but I just don't want it on there, you know? But yeah, it's fine. The only concern I have now is hopefully the tie strap or doesn't, you know, actually stay well it could stay on there for right now but when we remove it i expect the tie strap to come off with it it's not going to be a permanent you know earpiece for it there we go and then we can also maybe consider putting some silicone here as well just because these guys here don't want to stay put but um i think for the most part we should put probably not it's fine it's going to be a little bit gap i just don't like the gap Worst gonna worst, we could put applied pressure and put a little silicone. They'll stay, stay on there, and uh, maybe get a little C clamp. Yeah, we'll put a little C clamp or something like this right here. Just don't want to put too much pressure here, though. So those are little things like that. But yeah, let's get started in getting this guy fixed to see what, how we're gonna do this, where it's gonna interfere, how wide this needs to be opened up for it. But you can see it's pretty wide still. So the area that we're hoping that it really lands on, it's somewhere like if it's wide, we want it to be like right there, would be preferably. We'll see, because we definitely don't want to get into drilling our, you know, our solid glass uh, holder. But we'll see. Um, let's go ahead and move this over. Let's put the yoga mat down the bottom. That way we don't create too much tarnish when we flip it on his belly. I mean, flip it on his backside because we need to actually unscrew him. We can use the the little perforated side. There's okay. It's still pretty very soft. All right. So, wow, the mode yoga mat's nice. I can should have thought this working on this guy here. When I put my knee on here, it feels like nice. All right. So, yep, they get the best treatment here. It's like a spana. All right. There we go. Lay him over. It's like doing operation, huh? All right, so what we're gonna do is get some Phillips. 
removed. We got the tool and everything here to do it. Let me flip it the other way so you guys can see it better with the light. There we go, lights always helps. Much better camera angle with the light. Okay, we're turning this hammerhead shark around. <laughs> so it feels like a little bit. All right. You see that new Pikachu movie coming out? I feel like I'm in the characters. Uh, Pikachu. I'm not really a Pokemon fan or anything, you know. But it definitely looked like it's geared toward a little bit younger audience. But yeah, people collect them. There was a craze and phenomenal, that's for sure. So let's get a little bit closer. Okay, so what we're gonna do is try to remove this whole, you know, center piece here off. Kind of interlocks here toward the end of it. But we'll see. See how much we can get off of there. And it still will support, unfortunately, because if we get off here, these things are really not gonna be supported. But if we remove off, we can get an idea how much those studs are somewhere here or where they're at. I mean, hopefully they're not closer here. See here, we can still drill whatever we need to drill. In fact, I don't know, is this aluminum? Or is this plastic painted to look like aluminum? I think it's plastic. Yeah, it's painted to look like aluminum. Pretty interesting, huh? I thought this was aluminum right here. But it's actually plastic painted to look like aluminum. <laughs> this is cool. Yeah, right, I was gonna say it looks pretty lightweight, you know, aluminum pieces, huh? Yeah, but it's plastic, so we gotta be careful. So there's a screw here too, by the way, so I didn't realize that. So two screws, actually this screw can stay there. It's this screw here that's holding this whole black, and then this third one set up. So let me go ahead and get something, Phillips, and let's get ready to screw that out of there. Okay, we can start either direction. We can start from this one. golden screws and since these are soft don't worry about it yet get all out of the way we got one down kind of do it evenly here this will probably be more of my struggle because like you know maybe it might be the easiest who knows but try and figure out where those holes are going to be bored out to get those strut bars step for the Gibby. It's gonna be a challenge. I think this is pretty much the last piece before the seat. And then we got to fix our uh, handlebar, um, handlebar plastic and then we're done, really. We got all our, pretty much our cover on there. This was sitting in my house for the longest time and I was trying to protect it. And a year later, now it's finally in one piece. Only a few damaged areas that we couldn't get. You know, like this guy here. But other than that, I'm pretty happy. I mean, everything else has been pretty much kept it well intact. And again, the frame was actually sitting outside in the rim where a little bit, sitting outside for a little bit, half a year, and then I put them in storage. But you can see here, the frame didn't do that bad either. And we had a few rust. And the engine, of course, you know, the gasket I reinstalled was a year ago and I didn't realize it would create more trouble. That's okay, we learned a lot in the process of troubleshooting our battery, we, to finding out that it was just simply the battery and we thought we can get the correct reading properly. But I guess what it is, the Nuku charger doesn't charge all the cells sometimes when it's trying to make good on his word of you know charging dead batteries. It kind of charges the other one up to full max, so that's why you get a false reading of 13.5 volts when it's really down to closer to more like 10 or 11, which isn't enough juice to crank. Now I wanna make sure, what I could do is take a snapshot of this video is a snapshot, all right? <laughs> uh, but where all these bolts are, so I can still hit the little camera button here. Just make sure I got the golden screws. They're located more lower. So what I'm gonna do is take a snapshot real quick, just to make sure I come back and trace. So these guys here are these screws here. They're the little darker screws, so I'll put them here in the little tip of the area. Okay, a little snapshot won't hurt us. We'll pose. There we go. I got the snapshot. I can take a snapshot. You guys don't even know it. You might see the camera jit a little bit. Okay, let's go back. Continue on. We got two more. One, and then this last one here in the very middle. 
And I believe that should release this back panel out. Prevent the Gibby from holding us from trying to see where it's actually supposed to be mounted. We'll do a drive fit. If we can, I think we can. It's going to be a little bit of struggle. And then we'll put the seat and everything. Last one's going to take a little bit more of the pressure, so I'm going to put pressure on it. took this off before so we'll find out so we got two of these uh, three actually sorry so the three green ones are pretty much for the dark area we could say and then the the gold ones are for the light area that's how we'll remember it okay so it's for the fake aluminum it's gonna be our green ones and for the gold area will be the light ones so, or near there okay let's see so we can make sure so this goes here you see a little rivets there these are the rivets, so they're plastic. I'll make sure we kind of poke them out. Just put a little pressure, not much there. Go. And it looks like it just pops all out from all angles here. So there we go. We got our little black piece out here. We can actually even paint this before we actually put it back on. In fact, we can we can definitely use a little touch up. Not bad, actually. I probably wouldn't want to because this gets covered up anyway. This gets covered up. See, it has a nice. Unless this is really badly scratched, we should be fine. I don't want to do too much to, because our paint might not be better than what it was originally. But it definitely is dirty. Clean this up a little bit here. We'll get the horn off. I don't know. This looks like some, some kind of like, what do you call that? Steer horn or something or steer face icon. <laughs> that looks awesome though. Yeah, I guess everything on this bike panels are freaking awesome looking and then when they come together They make them one and then Zen and again, they put their logo on everything So you can see here. I'm not sure this means a part number or anything or a calendar But you can see all the little Zen and parts They put something on there There you go Some kind of reflective number code of some sort But it's a Zen and scooter. That's for sure and they privatize it for other companies too that makes them. But I think this is the actual company that makes them. Taozong Shang Hang. That's what it says on my registration too. So I always think I have some kind of Chinese guy's name on my registration <laughs> other than mine. <laughs> so, okay, so we got that there. So this is it. This is all that we got. So let's see how far we can reach over. And these are going to be interlock. Uh, we could probably preset the clips now, but. I am debating if we do preset the clips now, what will be our downside? Let's see here. Because we need to get this guy back in there some way, right? And we can't really go from underneath this. So more than likely, we actually have to pull everything out anyway. So let's go and do a dry fit. Don't worry about these guys for right now because we're not going to mount it yet. The reason why is we have to lift off and remove the whole thing, I believe, in order to go back underneath here and screw them once we know where to poke the hole for the strut bars because those strut bars are not going to leave us alone like they're just holding the gibby little aluminum strut bars we're going to find out if it even lands on those this guy here if it lands on this guy's piece right here we're going to have to find out where are the two holes that we need to poke out of this guy here in order to make it work so now that we got off we can probably squeeze this in more and we'll get all the way to the front where it interlocks here. All the little rivets, the little plastic rivets. Okay, so let's do that. While keeping this guy safe on the bottom so I don't actually step on him because I know I will. So let me go and put him in here. It's directly in the bottom, just protect it. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on shoving this guy in. You guys going to see me shove it in now. Looks freaking awesome though, the bike so far. All right, here we go. Concentrate on getting him in there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is bring this guy over. He doesn't have that much support anymore because his little center piece is gone. So you gotta be really careful. 
have to support both loose ends here. Okay, so I'm holding it like this and I'm flapping it. Okay, it's coming in. Widen it up, open his legs sort of. Or wings or whatever you guys feel comfortable saying. There we go, and then we also have to get him over here to that. He's coming over. Yes. Yes, but not yet. He's got to go in the lower position. Oh, man. He's not, okay. Ouch, ouch, ouch. I think he's, he's got to climb over this guy, too. He's got a lot to climb. Yeah, I'm going to try to hook him on something. So it looks like he's got a lot to climb. Um, he's getting to the red zone here. That's what I was afraid of. Which we'll have to do what we got to do, right? Because the strap bar is still staying on. But we need to bring this tail guy back into. This guy here, he's going to be lifted in a position. I'm hoping his position here is not where the strap bar is. It might be actually. This bolt right here, these two? No, it can't be. Yeah, it can't be. It's actually held here. I think. Let's see how much of line. Yeah, it's probably held here. You look at it. See how wide these two guys are? Where do they go? I think they go right here, these guys. This wide right here. One here. So we'll probably get a longer Allen bolt for this guy. And another one right here behind it. The reason why I don't believe that these guys, these two maybe, are perfectly parallel to this guy here. I'm not thinking it is. I don't think it is. But I could be wrong. It might be going inward. See there right there? The strap bar is already there. So if I take the strap bar out, I can get a better visual where it actually lands. So that means I have to remove the strap bar also on the other side. Which in order for me to remove the strap bar, I have to take out the Gibby of course, which is temporary, we knew that. But I'll have to unbolt those guys to lift them up or else I can't screw them out. But one way to find out is get a tape measure and see if it actually was the distance from where we thought it would have not been. So let's see if I can find a tape measure here. Caliper might be too short. Now I have a tape measure inside. I just don't want to go back inside and grab it. Okay, so I don't have a tape measure out here, so I'll have to go grab one from the inside unless I can find one quickly here. Let me go get the tape measure from inside. And yeah, so this one's coming over. You can see here, it has a little bit to meet up here in the front still. So we still got quite a ways. So I'll have to really take a strap bar to really find out. I'm not really sure, but it might be possible. But these two here, I really believe, one, two, I really believe it probably sticks to this guy here oh yeah and then you see the little middle see the little middle screw here this one if you come underneath here you see it has a place for the middle the middle guy let's see tilt it around so you can see up there we go see that there's that middle bolt see that right here I'm sorry right here see that this right here is, if I'm not mistaken, this little middle bolt here. Or, I don't think these two sides here are enough. I think it's, yeah, it could be. Okay, but I think it's more like this side right here. This guy here, and then this guy here. This guy over here. These two, well, no. Sorry, scratch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, here we go. These guys here. And these guys here are pretty distance, right? You can see here. 
almost a good you know palm size apart with my index to my thumb almost I still can go a little further but they're right about right there right and you got a middle one here the middle one has an inch away you have this guy out of the way inch away you got these two then you got that center one so if you look at this one it can be those two because you have the center one and it can be those two right there next to them so they're a little bit further spread out so they are probably these guys right here so that means this whole bottom probably needs to remove as well first or integrate yeah it has to be removed first because there's no way of getting it back in here so the top one needs to go first and then this extra thing here needs to go first however this thing is wired up already so we might have to do a little bit of ship shaping here to interlock it this is probably going to be one challenging yeah, it's probably going to be one challenging attempt i mentioned so see where the bulbs are for the tail lights coming out that looks pretty awesome so yeah we got this one and we got this side here so yeah they'll screw on these sides now determining these look like the perfect bolt size here for the distance that the center one would look like it rides below it a little bit so if i'm not mistaken the center one here should be more below it see how it is see one it's like maybe a good probably a good half an inch below the other two sides here so more than likely these two sides are going to be this bolt here and this bolt here so we need again so that's good to know that this guy doesn't clamp in here however since you can see how much more it needs to come back what 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 that look like from here from this right here all the way over here it looks like it's going to go back as far as maybe at least three inches or even two and a half minimum so that means this will be driving to the red area so we need to actually protrude and make holes in our nice red area so it's not going to stick to the black area and fortunately there's no other way around it i mean unless we move this guy straight up here you know but we moved him close to the edge so he gets the most support from our gibby which is a huge dome shape uh you know back gasket which it did without even with the struts but i figured you know what let's just for long-term use that we're going to be riding it we might as well put the struts now um another thing i could think of is we ditched the whole dome backlight i mean it's gonna look pretty naked without the rear rear um thing or we could actually take it off i mean we could take it off and then again we can't really mount it back in because it's interlocked once we get it in there i mean how are we gonna yeah see this thing is covered too so it's not like we we have to do some serious operation we have to get our hands in there and try to screw the areas to tie this together so this has to come on in one piece for us to really make it work but at the same time the piece that we need to drill it's not going to come off that easily so we need to figure out how and then we need to do a really clean drill because these things are plastic so we're going to have to drill at a very high rpm to cut cleanly or else if it ricochets and we're in trouble so that's it that's one of our challenge there because I, if i take the struts out now i mean i will get a little bit more idea how far these guys are actually protruding um so we can do that right afterwards before we try to get this securely mounted on there because that's the only way to really determine it unfortunately so yeah only mainly because we have to modify because of the struts and i wish i could just have a little magic wand here but damn that looks freaking nice isn't it look that red I think that's why we have to keep this guy here because he matches so well with the Gibby red LID bulb. So this is how it's going to look like once everything's securely mounted. So let me take a snapshot of this real quick because it looks so freaking good. Yeah, so let me go ahead and contemplate on how we're going to do this. Uh, how much more we need to remove in order to fit it in there. More than likely we have to remove the struts and everything. But in the meantime, I'm going for lunch. I think Jack in the Box sounds pretty good. Double chicken patty with lettuce, tomatoes, mayonnaise, buttermilk sauce on the side, some french fry, and a nice vanilla Dr. Pepper to wash it off with. Sounds good, you guys. I'll see you guys hopefully in the next video.